matters If you're not mine right here, right now And even if the world ends Then I'll be fine, no fear, no doubt I know a place that sneak away Leave the pain, I'll stay Another Ab Nation barbecue, barbecue show with the hockey coach Joe Cold French directly for the before country of the land of the smile and tannin on an amazing great Monday night, uh, June 26, 2023. We are two days before the NHL draft uh, in Nashville, uh, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Hopefully, to see you. Uh, over there, we'll be live streaming uh, to Wednesday night at 6 30. Uh, that'll be uh, an amazing, great night to join us live if you don't mind. So, that's what we got, guys. Uh, tonight, we have a special uh, night. Uh, we're going to talk about the Montreal Canadian in the next couple of minutes. But the subject of the night, guys, uh, we're going to do live uh, do a 2023 NHL mock draft uh, with some special guests with me. And we're going to go through each team from 1 to 32. We'll try to get the 32, if we, the 32 second, uh, 33rd um, over, 32 second overall pick uh, uh, tonight. If we can, uh, we have enough uh, time to do that. Uh, so it'll be very interesting. And you are the one you're going to participate in the chat to give us maybe who you would like to pick and, uh, at the second, third, fourth, and fifth. This is what we got uh, tonight for you guys on this program. And uh, don't forget tomorrow night, a special show about the Montreal Canadian. Uh, uh, for the pick uh, number 5th and 31st and 37th. And what are you going to do? So join us live tomorrow night. It's all about the Montreal Canadian. But if you don't know, if you follow me uh, for the last couple of weeks, maybe uh, maybe you're new. We do an uh, ad daily news every day at 7 o'clock Eastern Time release uh, by the Hockey Nation. And uh, we make a couple of, you know, talking about the Montreal Canadian. It's called the ad daily news. And then... Uh, yesterday, we talked about possibly a two trade for the Montreal Canadiens with the New Jersey Devils uh, for um, Igor Sharekovich. And then we talked about the Columbus Blue Jacket, about the Adam Bovis. Uh, another trade like uh, Ken Hughes did last year about uh, Kirby Dock. Uh, can the Montreal go that direction? We don't know yet, but uh, that was the show yesterday. If you are follow us too, we're not done because uh, what we got for you guys uh, is uh, we started uh, we start a new channel called the App Nation. It's just not start as a, 
accept with video but we want to increase in the number of subscribers this uh, channel is going to be only about the montreal canadian we're not shut down the hockey nation we're just going to open up a new channel and only exclusively about the ab nation so we invite you guys to join us i'm going to have a special show if you follow us uh, or never or maybe the first time don't forget all summer mondays and wednesday night they are all usually for the montreal canadian uh, the ab at barbecue show they call it for the summer so that's what we got about the, the promotion or marketing the way you want to call it but uh, tonight like i mentioned to you we're going to talk about the the market the nhl market draft 2023 and uh, we have a special guest tonight with me tonight uh, for this uh, event and of course he is back with us uh, from toronto going to have uh, in our tap and then uh, he was with us last year a couple of times he really knowledge, uh, knowledge about the rookie the prospect and then i would think it was the right way to bring him but when we knew he have this jersey with uh, on him right now maybe we're going to push him uh, behind the door we don't know yet what we're going to do with him but uh, we welcome of course uh, ladies and gentlemen directly from calgary he write the article about the calgary flame and he write about the Toronto Maple Leaf, and we welcome Mr. Randy Walkman is in the house tonight. Welcome, Mr. Randy. Thank you for with the Hockey Nation Live Show. Usually, we do uh, we applause the people show up, but now what we do is well, worry about your jersey, uh, Mr. Randy. I, I I will go change my, my Maple jersey. <laughs> My plane jersey, the, the, the abuse I'm putting up with, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much, both of you, to join me live for the, the great uh, market draft uh, we're going to do tonight. We do this every year, guys. We do a special show about this, give you a little bit what's going on. Uh, and that's what we got tonight. So, of course, you're going to consider to give us some con some questions. Don't eat straight. And we're going to give you the best uh, information we can bring to you. Because the NHL is right now, um, tonight is the NHL Awards. Uh, we're not going to talk too much about this. You can watch it live and, you know, we want to maybe bring some kind of information tomorrow. Uh, we're only now, we said to you, Patrice Bergeron won the Salke, I believe, for the sixth time. So, congratulations for Bergeron. And then uh, we're going to do it differently to answer to your question you have tonight, guys. So, we want to thank everybody uh, to join us. Uh, before we start, uh, both of you guys want to... Welcome a few people in the chat, and then we we'll move on with some news about the Montreal Canadiens. But, Mr. Nartap, uh, how can I have a great show like uh, Luc Lafortune? Look back from the Lounge Gardien is in the house tonight. Luc Lafortune in the house. But we have to get a timeout. A timeout because I forgot about this. Not forget about this, but uh, I'm not sure he's still uh, watching right now. He may be asleep. Because if you are in Thailand, uh, you are uh, early in the morning, 8 o'clock a.m. And uh, last night, uh, for the first time, I met face-to-face uh, -face Mr. Rudolph. Uh, uh, Mr. Rudolph is a teacher in English in Tokyo. And he is on the journey of vacation right now, on the trip from, uh, I think he went, he went to Vietnam or Philippines. And then he went to Bangkok. And then last night, he visited uh, Pattaya, where I live, uh, beside Pattaya. And we went out last night. We had a great dinner for about uh, three hours. Talk about everything uh, on the on the water. That's very really nice. Uh, and then after that, we want to uh, explore to him a little bit what it looked like the Pattaya area knife life. Uh, and um, Rida had a lot of great uh, great moment over there. Rida, he, uh, uh, he turned to be like another John Travolta inside the the bamboo bar last night. Uh, uh, you really enjoyed it <laughs> about that one there. Uh, yeah, yeah, some other, uh, you know, John Travolta was not alone last night, but uh, would be interesting. He would maybe let you know in the chat uh, how kind of night. Maybe he's awake. I don't know yet. I left him at 2 o'clock in the morning. So uh, we wish the best for <laughs> Mr. Rodolfo. Maybe he's hangover. Um, but we'll see what's happening to him. But uh, we have other people in the chat, guys. Sebastian is in the house, uh, following by William McClary is in the house. John Gregor, Mr. Nartap, is in the house. Uh, big friend of the uh, Boston Bronx. We know Boston was active today uh, with a couple of traitors. And Rabinov uh, is in the house uh, tonight. Uh, thanks to be with, with the Hockey Nation Live show. Uh, then uh, Sebastian talked about this earlier. Dues. Uh, 
There we go. Deuce is in the house. Welcome back. RB is in the house. I think RB is the first time. If you are not, uh, welcome back. Uh, thanks for being with us uh, tonight. My dream scenario is Mitch Cobb is a five and the ab draft at him. My nightmare, Mitch Cobb is a five and the ab pass uh, on him. Uh, yeah, uh, could happen. Uh, RJ Calabro is in the house. Uh, William McLeod, Billy going to LA uh, about this one over there. Two days ago, getting real now. Getting closer and closer. I was just going to give us all the update, uh, guys, about the, the the winner of the trophy. So thanks, RG, to do that in the chat. I'm not going to talk too much about this tonight. Gary Cornoyer is in the house. The moderator, Luciano Graziano, is in the house. What about Mr. Nartap and Randy, our friend André Robert Drouin, directement dans la belle province de Québec. He is de retour avec nous ce soir. André, welcome uh, with the uh, Hockey Nation tonight. Uh, hopefully you're doing well. Uh, glad to have you aboard for another great show of the, uh, the AB. Uh, barbecue show. Uh, try to pick it up by everybody else, guys. Uh, and then uh, we look happy to see Randy. Yes, we are happy to have Randy in the house uh, tonight. So thanks, everybody, to join us. Uh, and let's start in the show right away. And it's rare I do this. Uh, uh, everything in 13 minutes. That's pretty good about that. Uh, and Rabbi Naf, uh, welcome. Uh, let's talk Montreal Canadian news. Uh, we have a couple of news. And, uh, and after I was to feed me, feed me. He's my insider uh, when I wake up the morning. Uh, Nina from Thailand is in the house. Nina, hopefully doing well, by the way. And I give you some news. That's something, that's something, guys. About uh, the first news on Montreal Canadian. Uh, guys, uh, the ad news. Uh, forget about that. Sorry about this. Uh, uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois will go talk about this. Uh, Mashkov is a new player for the Montreal Canadiens, not Mishkov. I'm going to fix this very quickly. Move up and move down for the Montreal Canadiens. So, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Mr. Nartab, you can give us some update what's going on with uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois. Well, from uh, most recent uh, uh, sources that we're getting and stories, uh, it looks like that deal that we were talking about yesterday with LA, which I thought was very, very sweet for Winnipeg. Uh, in their favor. It uh, looks like it's uh, not necessarily going to go through because there's some controversy in terms of whether Pierre-Luc Dubois will sign the extension. And so without the extension, I don't think LA obviously will be interested, uh, at least in giving the package that the, uh, the last couple of days. So it comes back into course of all Canadians at this point. So it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, I, I, I think that it's it's going to sort of be a domino effect uh, in the sense that if Montreal were able to get him, it might change their their perspective on how they approach the draft. Uh, if they don't get him, then obviously uh, they'll have to go. Uh, I think a little bit more traditional in terms of their their approach uh, with the draft. So uh, we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, it, to me, it, it it still baffles the mind. Uh, I, I think Winnipeg is in a is is in a corner right now, and obviously they're trying to get anything and whatever they can for uh, PLD, um, but they don't have much leverage. I, I really sincerely believe that because at this stage, if they circle back to Montreal, Montreal, that's the only direction you can go. You're not going to give up a king's ransom to try to get PLD. Uh, so, you know, it, it, the, the ball is is in our court, and we'll see how it ends up. But who knows? But the interesting about Pierre Dubois, of course, a couple of comments. Uh, look, like you know, it's a story, and you know, it's a saga over one year now. Uh, Pierre Dubois, you know, again, uh, he requests to make trade. That's the first thing. Second thing, he requests to sign a contract of seven years. And now he's maybe changing his mind again. Now he wants to maybe a one-year contract and then to move to Montreal. I don't see anything. We're going to try to make a trade for Pierre Duo for one year. Yeah. At least they get something, a really low bargain, a little bit like a one like Colorado example, right? So maybe uh, Winnipeg get yeah. a person that money, 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 Many of the, the chat are tired of the Pierre Luc Dubois. That's maybe we just want to see an outcome of the situation and move on with other stories. And it would look like he's always stuck with the Montreal Canadian because he wants to play with Montreal Canadian. At the end of the day, like I mentioned yesterday, um, it all depends uh, in our tap or in Randy about the fact like he should do a very low profile. And sometime in life, you have to go that direction. Say, so, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice one year of hockey 
I'm going to play with Impact Jet. I'm going to sign. You do the right things, right? So, yes, Jet, I'm going to sign one year contract, six point five, six point nine million. And then after that, one year, he wants to be a free. He wants, he desire, he's one, he is graving to play for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, sometimes you need to sacrifice in life, and I think that would be the. I, I thought it was going. To, I thought, from my point, it was the best way for Pierre Luc Dubois to go that direction. For the month for himself that with the Winnipeg Jet, he left the building with some kind of not like you know disagreement or someone be upset about that. He, he become uh, UFA. That's his right to go whatever he want to do. I think that be the right things to do. Unfortunately, um, he did not go that way, and that's stuck with him now, and that's make him uh, how the people think about him because he cannot. You know, that way you're supposed to be. Honey, Alvin, do you want to add something about Pierre Dubois or? My can... internet's getting a little bit bad, so I'm just moving around to see if I can get a better signal, guys. Sorry. Not a problem. All good. Um, there we go. I look at we'll refresh, refresh your black box there, coach, about that one there. Uh, welcome, Steve G. Thanks to be with okay. Uh, Mike is a bit shaky tonight. Uh, is it me? No, it's not. I, I struggle with uh, some kind of problem with my software right now, so uh, I try to stay live and don't go around some much fight something around. So I try to not get a problem. <laughs> Can you hear me? Are you freezing? <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm okay. Sorry, No, I was just saying it, it keeps going in and out. Okay, it yeah, the like triple uh, you said is lagging. If you that, we try to have the best we can recovery for that. If not, we're going to restart. So, if ever we're leaving the building, uh, I'll be that one over there. <laughs> Uh, and Rabdel said, Pierre Luxbois is probably better a uh, player than Dak, uh, but I would uh, hate uh, giving Dak up uh, about this. Captain Kirk is in the house. Steve G, Triple A, W is in the house. And Sebastian, I think it's something like that. So I don't know if anybody feel about that. It's just my partner of yeah. freezing a bit, so I don't know <laughs> what happened about that. Uh, Pierre Luxbois wants to go out Montreal. Point final, Burr is St. Paul. The Jet uh, need to lower their expectation trade wise uh, for Gary. Yes, that's a possible that's something I think in our tap talk about this way, right? Uh, about exactly what Gary said for that. Uh, coach uh, broadcasting from March. <laughs> March. Uh, about that one with it. Yeah, uh, maybe the chief from last night still uh, uh, I'm getting the Z uh, A2. <laughs> uh, just turn off uh, your video about that one there. You're so that's the thing coach. about Pierre Dubois. We're not going to go too deep about Pierre Dubois. We tell we tell everything about him. We'll see what's going to happen about him. Uh, so this part, um, I think in the said he is supposed to meet a Montreal Canadian today, and uh, maybe in the can add more information awesome. about uh, Matt V. Mitch Carver. Yeah, apparently today uh, uh, he was in Montreal. I know that they've they've spoken. Uh, Barkov uh, uh, Barkov has spoken very highly of him uh, in terms of the interview itself. But I'm getting a lot of reports as well that uh, they're they're sort of questioning his his attitude. Sounds familiar, mm-hmm. like when we talk about Pierre Luc Dubois. Uh, so I mean. I, again, I don't know if that's posturing sometimes, uh, and it's just the way the GMs are sort of playing their cards and and getting their their scouts to sort of you know play the game. Of, uh, you really want to attend an um, uh, evening of the of, of the draft uh, because it could affect it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I you know what? Uh, there's absolutely no doubt that he is one of the most talented. Uh, players in the draft, um, and he will definitely bring a lot to whatever team he, he ends up uh, landing on. Um, other things, I mean, I know his defensive game is is a little bit suspect from what I read. Uh, obviously, we we haven't witnessed extensive video of him uh, playing, uh, so it's hard to gauge exactly the validity of some of these statements. 
But if if you take those those reports that you read about, you know, uh, the defensive game can be something to improve on, but that's not something that's comfortable. <clears throat> that's something that you're born with. And uh, th this kid is special. Can you hear me? I shifted my 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 mic to I something can, else. So um, <clears throat> I, I tried you. to fix everything. So I tried to <laughs> listening and I'm tapping that and tried to work on my mic at the same time. <laughs> so I understand what you said. Just shifting. So I think it's better right now. Is it possible? Yeah, it seems what? better. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. So, uh, Miss Cox, this will be interesting. You know, it's another outcome everybody wants to know. And uh, that's exactly the reason why the NHL uh, bring a hot topic uh, the last couple of days. And, and because, honestly, uh, and uh, that will be interesting to see the next couple of days. So, the next two days, uh, if Montreal is going to do that direction or not uh, uh, for Mitch Cove. Uh, Brandy, anything you have to hear about uh, Mitch Cove? I've heard the same thing as uh, in North, um, North Hap has. I've heard that uh, people are worried that he's trying to control where he's going to go. You know what I mean? They're worried that he 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 wants to try to make force uh, only one team. He's trying to force the issue of where he wants to go. So I've heard the same thing that in North Hap has is his attitude. I'm worried awesome. about his attitude. That's what I've heard. Um, William Scott said he was very rude. Um, yeah, not many reasons. Oh, no, he's not skinny. <laughs> move up, move down, the center tap. But what do you think about that? <laughs> well, it, it it's, like it's, a possi it's a possibility, coach. Um, yeah, go ahead. It's yeah, I'm just saying it's. It's a possibility. Uh, like we said a, a couple of nights ago, even when Marco was on, uh, you, you got to rest assured that uh, they, they will have done their homework. Uh, they being both Hughes and Gorton, uh, they'll have two, three, four, ten different routes to go, depending on how the, you know, uh, the, the, the draft uh, and, and uh, folds out for everybody. Um, I, I could I could see either of those cases. I could see them moving up under certain circumstances. Uh, I could see them picks. I think I had tried to um, encapsulate one possibility of a of a trade where they gave up their fifth, uh, but it would involve two other teams as well, and they would end up in the end with Leonard and um, and Oliver Moore. If if things unfold the way they should, which which would not be something to to be uh, disappointed about be. if you got those two gentlemen on your team, so uh, you know what we can speculate all we want. Um, at at the end of the day, I I, I believe that uh, whatever route they go, it's dictated by how how the draft is unfolding and and the way things are working out uh, around them. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Randy, anything you want to add? Do you think what Montreal is going up and down? Yeah, I th um, I basically, I think it's a matter of choice of two players uh, that Montreal will probably go with. Um, I'm not going to give you my answers because I don't want to give it away too early. <laughs> but yeah, I think there's one or two players. I see. That's great to see that. Uh, uh, we have a couple of things happening. Uh, someone talked about the Boston Bruins uh, um, in the chat. And so let's move on. What's going on uh, for that? Uh, is the Montreal, uh, the Boston Bruins guys uh, uh, make two trades today. One with the Chicago Blackhawks was a major one, then a minor one, the New Jersey Devils uh, on this. Uh, we won't see if we can get there uh, for that trade. Uh, for the first of all, the Boston Bruins, uh, uh, the minor one is between the, them and the New Jersey Devils. Uh, uh, the New Jersey Devils uh, got Shane Bowers and the Boston Bones got the Rally Washer on that minor trade uh, between both teams. And, but the biggest one was really the one I want to talk about, uh, <clears throat> guys, is the Boston Bones trade uh, veteran uh, uh, MVP uh, and NHL, uh, Tyler Hall uh, and the veteran Nick Fodino writes uh, as a UFA uh, for Alec Regula and Jan Mitchell. 
the defenseman. When you see that trade very quickly, you see this is that Boston Bruins want to open up more money on, on the salary cap. Uh, uh, I, I think they try. For I could be wrong here. Maybe you can help me about that. I think Boston tried to get Bertuzzi, keep Bertuzzi or Olav inside of the organization. They need more money. So what do you think about this uh, with the... Uh, Are you still there, Mr. Natap? I know we have a couple of trade uh, problems with the, the internet right now. Yeah. yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. I can. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, I. you know what, Coach? I, it's totally, totally a, a salary dump for, for Boston in my eyes. I do believe that they will try to resign uh, Bertuzzi. I think that that's their primary uh, goal, but... I would not be surprised if Boston has some other things in mind. Uh, and and if you look at the at their list, they do have a number of players that are still unsigned uh, going into the year. So I, I don't know if they'll come into play here. Uh, what I don't understand is why necessarily Chicago would do this because they're not really getting any kind of return here. It doesn't seem to fit. I mean... I, Hall and Felino don't seem to fit the the model of of a, of a rebuild here. Um, you know, if, if it's something that they'll agree upon later on down the road, I don't know. Uh, but uh, it, it just seems it boggles the mind why Chicago would go with this. I I, I just don't get it. I, Randy, can I go ahead? Um, I think I think they're getting Hall. So they can grab them and trade them at the uh, deadline and get more assets for them. Simple as that. They're grabbing him, and they're going to plan on him scoring 20 to 25 gold with Bedard, and then they're going to get as many assets as they can at the deadline. Yeah, I could see that, Randy. That's You're right. Uh, I'm just surprised That's... that they, they wouldn't go for some picks right now. I mean, they're currently – in a situation that they could draft in a good year, uh, why they didn't, you know, maybe get a pick as well with this? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good point. And the the other player that they they acquired in the trade that surprises me is a third line Feligno is what third line fourth last fourth line over expensive player. Yeah, I agree. Why? 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 Go ahead. Uh, and obviously, they're planning on re-signing. In fact, I've been told they're planning on re-signing. Well, that's it. That's all I was going to say, Coach. You go ahead. A lot of great comments in the chat, by the way. We welcome a few people pop up here, so we appreciate sure that. Uh, yes, I think the, 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 that th they try to surround uh, Connor Beda with better players uh, in the lineup. Uh, I don't be surprised that uh, Max Domi returned in Chicago. They, really, uh, they try to get maybe Ryan O'Reilly, another return with some kind of leadership uh, inside. So they try to fill up a couple of spots, uh, and they have money to do this. So um, um, O'Reilly, possible. Someone said in the chat, maybe Boston Bruins are looking for Ryan O'Reilly uh, to get. It's all depends on the money he wants Ryan O'Reilly. I think it would be a great pick for the Boston Bruins to get Ryan O'Reilly. Uh, I think he's put a type of the player he is. Uh, and NHL fit very well of what the Boston Bruins want to accomplish. So uh, I think that could be a, pick, a good pick for the Boston Bruins. Again, Chicago are really looking to add more players. And that's the reason why they try to get uh, fun players in the NHL. Uh, Boston Bruins with more money. I think they're targeting, like I said, Bertuzzi, Orlov, or other UFA. Uh, the, the departure, maybe Kretschek, Bergeron, and possibly try a one or two goalie. I think they try to try now uh, Ulmark. I wouldn't be surprised to try to trade uh, Hill Mark uh, with carrying a, a salary about four point five or five million dollars for the team. So uh, that open up for the end and a little more money on the chat on the uh, Lucien talked about this yesterday and that he add this today. I don't know. Uh, for me I did not hear anything, but maybe I'll be shocked to trade Brad Marchand. Sometime in it's fun organization in initial guys, they have some kind of connection where uh, the fans fall in love, the player fall in love, the team fall in love. It's hard to trade a player like uh, Brad Marchand. It's happening in the past, of course, but for me, I don't see that right now. Uh, it's a bit like if Pittsburgh would like to trade Crosby. Um, 
I don't feel this way. I don't know what you think about this. I would like to have your your eye, what you think about uh, Marchand to get trade or not uh, in our time, and then we're going to move on to the mock draft. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that uh, assessment, Coach. Uh, it's it's hard to believe that, but we, uh, uh, we also have to keep in mind that this is a business, right? And if you look at Marchant, uh, he's he's got two years left. That's six point, uh, I think it's at six point two five or something to that effect, which is very uh, attractive to teams that mm-hmm. might be contending and need. That type of grit and sandpaper and offensive kind of player that he can contribute. So if you're going to ever make a move like that and establish, you know, the kind of reign that they have had in the NHL over the last number of years, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility that they could go this way. By the way, I want to give you the update. Uh, we have a breaking news uh, talking about him. Linus Ullmark won the Vizna Trophy <laughs> as the best goaltender lead with 1.89, a goal again average, a six percentage on 9.38. This is a really great number. If you think about below 2.00 and over 9.30, this is a really amazing, great year for Ullmark. Whatever he struggled at the first round uh, against Toronto and Philippe, uh, we have to give credit uh, for the Except Buffalo Sabres. So sorry about that. I'll just give you the update. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, oh, so right. that's. Go ahead, Brendy. Oh, no, I just got some breaking flames news about one of the Flames players getting okay. a. Um, winning the King Clancy Award, and that would be Michael Backlund. Uh, yeah. So I'm good. We have a couple of people in the chat. Welcome, everybody. If we don't mention your name, we're Dan Asham, knock the door. I think Roger uh, NHL back in the house tonight. Hopefully doing well, you and your wife. And we have a couple of people comments about this. Uh, Luke said uh, Boston never been shy on trading good players. Uh, um, yeah. It, 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 some some GM guys is are aggressive. Some they don't worry about like they, they go. If they need something, they go. And uh, some, like, I think for me, Marc Bergeron was a passive GM. Uh, he took about, like, every anxious of his body or uh, to figure out if he need to trade, like, like you know, Pika Subban or something like that. He not, was not very aggressive, in my opinion. But some GM in NHL, uh, Sweeney is one of them, and Dan Waldell uh, for the Carolina Hurricane has always been a guy like that. Uh, Try to make the, the, the team very better. I think uh, the Steve Eisenman is another one. Uh, with a tempo, be like, then look what he did. He's not afraid. Like, you think about Eisenman last year, yeah. guys, uh, and generally they tried to make the playoff, and then in February, he turned around to sell that, you know, two players uh, uh, to uh, get better prospect for the future for them. So it's really different. Again, Don Sweeney make a big trade with the Delaware Hall, drop the money there, but you have something behind that move. I don't ex- uh, expect possible they're going to keep uh, Bertuzzi and all of it. That's what I see behind that. So um, we appreciate a lot. Uh, thanks, everybody, to be a part of the show tonight. Uh, and then don't forget guys, to click on the like. If you don't mind, that'd be great. And then we apologize for some kind of problem technical we have right now with the uh, Ethernet, mic, well, I don't know yet. I try to figure out talking at the same time, bother by what's going on behind. It's not easy to stay focused uh, on the show. Uh, and another uh, Max Stag, uh, Stag in the playoff. Uh, look, uh, we have Gary and Money went all the way worse, but the Senate Cup uh, did not win the Senate Cup. <laughs> That's a good one about that one over there. I'm watching Connor Bedow right now on the TV with Randy Edman. Uh, Connor Bedow, guys, uh, I'm really impressed for his humble. How he is uh, accept everything's going on with him uh, for his own age, uh, for his young age, he's really well done, uh, well behavior. He spoke uh, very well and uh, very impressed by Conor Bedal. Um, he's going to be one of the you know the best player I believe in the next uh, 10, 15 years, uh, like McDavid. Before that was Crosby and many others. So that's all we got about the NHL news. I'm going to give you one more thing. You have anything about what's going on? Both of them are really connected, Randy and and our top guys about insider, insider NHL. A lot of news, and then uh, we appreciate them to take their time to be with us tonight before we start the NHL mock draft. So anything you want to add in our top or Randy about what's going on? What you heard about some news? Uh, uh, trade bait, signature, or uh, let's go with in our top first. Yeah, one really interesting one that I heard today was uh, the possibility 
of some kind of move between the uh, Washington and uh, Ottawa, uh, seeing Tom Wilson being traded uh, uh, to Ottawa, which would make you know fantastic progression in Ottawa's uh, uh, future. I think um, is that possibly is the return on that the, the Brinkat and and other pieces around it uh i don't know yet uh but that's something that was circulating today would be very interesting no, I, I saw that too anything else uh, Wendy, you want to add about the calgary fly model on the on your direction where one, you live one, in the one, western one, canada one small um one small report my um contact out of boston uh jimmy murphy on Boston, he's Murphy's Law, made a comment that don't count Calgary out on Hannafin. And so oh. they may be making room that they keep making cap for Hannafin too. So don't count that out either. Yeah, it would be interesting what happened over there. Again, a couple of names like, you know, Alibach and, you know, a team like Winnipeg at yep. Philadelphia. Uh, they're going to be active. Nashville try to move on. So what what we try to do before we start the, the, the NHL, uh, Anything you want to hear uh, in our top, you want to you expect something special at the NHL draft uh, this week in Nashville, a specific move or a team going to make be really active? I I think I think there's going to be a lot of action, Coach. I you know I mentioned it the other night as well. Uh, I think it'll probably be one of the most active drafts we've seen in a in a number of years, uh, and I say that for uh, you know a couple of reasons. Uh, number one. <clears throat> You have a series of uh, new GMs that have been shifted around to different teams. And I think each one of those GMs wants to sort of uh, put their own, uh, you know, uh, fingerprint on, on their team and start, the, whether it's a rebuild or a retool, they want to obviously start it in, in their uh, direction and what their vision is for that team. And, you know, we see it with Briere. I'm sure we'll see it with Trey Living. Uh, we know that both Winnipeg and Calgary are going to have to do something. Um, Montreal is definitely going to be in the mix. The Leafs are, are going to be there. Uh, New Jersey, I think, will will make some noise. Uh, Ottawa with new management now. We don't know what direction they'll take. So I, I do anticipate it being a busy day and, and seeing a, a, a lot of movement, whether it's just draft picks, bundling them, because there are a number of teams that uh, that don't have a first round pick, and so they might want to enter that that round, and so they have to give up something obviously for that. And then you got teams like, you know, um, Nashville and uh, uh, Arizona, uh, a couple of other San Jose that have multiple picks in the first round. So. Uh, they might be willing to to sort of dispense with some of those if 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 the deal makes sense. Completely agree with you about this. Uh, and uh, Randy, I uh, will ask a question coming from Luke Lafarton. Uh, uh, what yeah. do you think about the, if they leave Nalander or Manor? Uh, who do you keep uh, knowing they leave all at the ceiling? Uh, I'm hearing Nylander. Uh, I would like to see him try to trade Marner, though. In all honesty, and the reason why is because it isn't that I don't like Marner, but I think we could get more from Marner. But I'm hearing uh, Nylander is the one the Leafs will trade before they trade M Nylander on uh, Marner. That's but I'd great... rather them trade Marner. You have a lot of people talking. Mr. Alex Ducharme, welcome aboard. Thanks to be with them. Merci, Alex, to be with us as well. Uh, about this, a lot of people talk about fun subject. Uh, um, Jim Montgomery is the winner, guys, of the coach of the year in NHL. So we appreciate about this one over there. And uh, it's because we, as 45 guys, want to try the best we can to do the mock draft, uh, everything like that. And what we did, guys, uh, uh, we went to the NHL draft lottery. We asked uh, the, the NHL cover what going to be the, the order of the draft tonight. And then, uh, um, 
uh, uh, Daly, uh, the vice president, VP of the NHL, come back and give us. Uh, we don't have the, the recording, unfortunately, but uh, it looked like in our top win the lottery of the show tonight, uh, following by Randy, and of course, I'm always the last one. So I finished third on that draft. Thank so uh, uh, that's happening about this. So, Mr. Nartap, uh, you are on the clock. Uh, uh, you have uh, 30 seconds to select uh, for the for Flacox, yeah. and then it's the first overall pick. Uh, so uh, we'll see what Mr. Nartap has uh, behind the behind. <laughs> Well, let, let me think long and hard about this one. Who could it be? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you something. If, if we want to put a stamp on this uh, draft as being one of the most uh, ridiculous, if, if Bedard doesn't get picked first, I, I you know, the Chicago's in the huge, huge problems. Uh, you know, what can you say about uh, uh, Bedard that hasn't been said already? Like, this guy is the complete package. We were talking earlier about you know, the McDavid's, Crosby's, and those types of players, Gretzky's that have come through the league. This guy's going to be an ambassador for the league down the road, and uh, uh, he, he's a franchise player. I, I can't see them going outside of this. Yeah, I'm so right about that. I will ask people, guys, if you want to join the conversation, every time we select a, a pick for the team, you can put the, the you know, which team, which would be the player we select. It would be great to talk about this. A great Alex talking about Fentelli. Great comments. People in the chat respond to each other. And uh, that thing, that's a great one uh, to have uh, people respond for each one of them, uh, guys. Uh, uh, let's move on, I guess, for the pick number two. And this time is uh, Mr. And, uh, Mr. Randy right now is going to be on the clock uh, for that one over there. So, Mr. Randy, you have the team, the Anaheim Ducks, uh, second overall pick, uh, 2023. And you have to tell us uh, what is going to be uh, your players. Um, this is Connor's the consensus number one pick. Adam Fantelli is a slam dunk as the number two. He is by far probably the best playmaking center in the draft. I love his skating, and he'll do wonders. He'll, Fantelli is my pick when it comes to number two. Fantelli, a big, uh, big, big 6'2 center, play winger sometime, but more like singer. Have a great year with Michigan at World War Reign. Uh, a lot of people like him a lot. Some people are a little bit concerned about this, but I think... The level of compete of Fentley is out of the chart, in my opinion. If what the people talk more about this uh, big gen uh, center, and I think that one, the only thing I would say to you, you never know. Pat Verbeek is a, a student of Steve Eiserman, and, and I'm surprised us. The only way they can go surprisingly is select Matt V and Mitch Cobb. Uh, uh, when I am Ducks was really solid in the last couple of years to draft uh, Mason McDavid, uh, and of course. Uh, as they, Trevor Zegras, uh, then you talk about the defenseman. I think uh, you see him uh, play a lot of time with WHL. Zell Weger is a big defenseman. Jim, Jimmy Trestal is another great uh, center, uh, defenseman. And the kid from OHL, I believe, is uh, Matt Schick or Matt Schick, uh, uh, player, a uh, defenseman. So the, the NM Duck to add Fenty are going to be great. They try to try Gibson uh, during the offseason. So they are what the NM Ducks are right there. So uh, that would be interesting uh, what happening there. But uh, coach is on the clock, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, this is the third overall pick uh, for this one over there. And they are from the Columbus Blue Jacket. Uh, Columbus Blue Jacket uh, make a couple of moves on the offseason. And we will just wait right now. Mike Bacock is some kind of waiting for announce is at the end of the month to become the new head coach of the Blue Jacket. So the... Uh, the Columbus Blue Jacket are proud uh, to select uh, hmm, from Sweden. The center, Mr. Leo Carlson, uh, is the new player for the Columbus uh, Blue Jacket, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we know that jacket, we need some kind of defense, uh, some kind of forward, more as a center. And uh, that's the reason we're going to select, guys, uh, Mr. Leo uh, Carlson uh, for the Columbus Blue Jacket. Uh, any comments you want to add, Mr. Natap, about that pick? Well, they did make a, a statement earlier in the in the week, uh, I think two days ago, that they were going to go for a generational type of center. And uh, you're right, coach. He does fit that uh, that bill. He's a big guy at six foot two and 195 pounds, and and there's still uh, you know room for him to grow. Sorry, uh, uh, six foot three, I believe. Uh, yeah, not six, six two. So, 
and and he's got great great hands and a, a big boy big boy and definitely will will be a, an asset to the team I agree with uh, with that one over there for Leon Carlson. Let's not know if the people talk about the chat. The people talk about Will Smith over there. I like that. That's what you guys were looking for. Your guy to participate at the draft, everything like that. Uh, if we go there, this is close to the Mets. Uh, the Mets son then William McClary. Miss Carve goes number two for Paulo. Chicago need all the salary they can get. Uh, uh, Will Smith for CG. Uh, okay, the law is uh, love you, but he would like up the bet all. Uh, my concern with Fentley is potential. Uh, Fentley, I met Claire, he will not want to play right away. Uh, we don't know. I don't think so. Fentley confirmed he's going to return or not. Uh, I think he's waiting to see which team is going to select him, and then he's going to decide if he's returning for one more year and NCA uh, or not. Uh, <clears throat> About that one there. So, Mr. Natap, you're on the clock uh, as the fourth overall pick. Uh, and on uh, that one, Mr. Natap, you're going to go with the San Jose Sharks uh, uh, for Mr. Natap. Okay, so I guess this will be the first uh, controversial pick because I, I believe <laughs> they will go after Matt, Matt Bay Mitchkov. Um, we've talked about him uh, extensively. I think he fits into their plans in terms of the rebuilding stage. This is one of two or three teams that are up at the top that can afford to wait on Mitchkov. Um, and knowing that you're going to get this type of a generational player means you go for him when you can. Um, I, don't, I don't think he makes it to, the, to round five. So I'm going to go with uh, Mitchkov uh, for San Jose. That's awesome. We have a couple nice of points. <laughs> Excuse me. I have a couple of comments on that. A2 said Miss Cobb number two or four. Uh, looks like Carlson better to um, Fentley. I doubt Duck uh, take Miss Cobb. Maybe the Sharks. Uh, that's what I do said about the, the Mix Cobb. San Jose is really hard to fi uh, figure out. It's a new GM over there. I mentioned about him yesterday. And they, they need everything. <laughs> At the end of the day, I don't know. Most of the thing, what yeah. you need is uh, it's money for pay the salary cap. I think the next move could happen, and then expect that Eric Carlson will be trade at some point during the, the next couple of days. Uh, I would not be surprised he's trade at the Nashville Eric Carlson. But the San Jose could be the one direction. How they want to really go rebuilding, and I'm talking like the Flowers, or they said, no, we have to go through. The biggest problem is one Doug Wilson left the team with so many big contracts, and they suffer for years now uh, with the Kutcher uh, contract, um, and then uh, Thomas Hurdle, and then they have a couple of other players uh, they have to pay, and uh, you know, uh, McAdwa uh, and Vlasic uh, with Eric Carlson. So there is really a very bad team about the sorry, cap problem with there. So uh, I think for them, uh, Mitch Cobb, it makes more sense, in my opinion. Uh, because they don't need him for the next three years, and the San Jose going to drop their salary cap at the time Miss Cup's coming back. But uh, we're going to see anything could happen uh, about that. So we have now clock number five, guys. Uh, and it's going to be Randy about this one. And the fifth uh, overall pick uh, is, of course, one of your team. Many fans are looking for that one there. The Montreal Canadian Select. Uh, uh, we'll see what Randy has after Miss Cup surprisingly get out at the fourth overall pick. Uh. Uh, let me see. Can I? Should I tick off all the Montreal Canadian fans and pick somebody <laughs> bad? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, my uh, first of all, I'll say this. Uh, my 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 personal feeling is I think Benson's better, but I know Montreal Canadian for a fact, and I've been told this by several people, will be going with William Will Smith if if Mitchikoff is not there. William Will Smith will be their man. Montreal wants a big, tall center. They like the way they like the way Smith uses his his um, his tools. He's really good at using his weight. He's a smooth skater. I love his wrist shot. So yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm I'm going with Smith. I know I, I like Benson better as a player, but I think Montreal will pick Smith, and I have to go with what I think the team will go with. Therefore. I've got William Smith as my number five pick for Montreal. Yeah, 
you're absolutely right about this one over there because the miscarry is out of the board. Uh, everything you said is exactly what we, we believe the Montreal is going to do about that. Well, a couple of people with great uh, comments, guys, in the, ch- in the chat. Uh, Mr. Zadal, welcome here for the first time. Guy, if you are new, don't forget to subscribe and click on the like. That'd be awesome if you can do that. Uh, uh, he said, uh, uh, what would be the reason that the Shark will take Smith and send a miscarry, Mr. Natap? Anything you want to talk about this or you want to add something there? Why would they take Smith over Mitchcock? Mitch yeah, if uh, only if they have some reservation in terms of uh, Mitchcock himself, Mitch- um, it, I, I don't think it's it, it has anything to do with timing, because even in in Smith's case, I I don't see him playing this year. Obviously, uh, he, he'll probably, if anything, will be available to them n- next year. Uh, so. Uh, you know, size-wise, that could be an issue because uh, Smith is, I believe, just over six foot, and the, you know he gives you a little bit more dimensionality that way. Uh, but he's not the strongest of the prospects that are out there defensively. Uh, so it's not like you're losing anything or gaining anything by going with Smith over over uh, Mitchkov. So. I, I don't see it happening, uh, but you know, uh, I think Smith is a great pick if if you can get him at that stage. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the only thing I got, go ahead. No, I was just going to say the only thing I got uh, what to add on to what Inotrap said is uh, if San Jose doesn't want to wait three years, they may go with Smith, who will be uh, who might commit quicker than three years. Copes. That's the only other. That's the only other explanation I would have. Well, that's a great comment. The committee was going to set that direction, not talking about San Jose, but I would say the team select Mitch Cobb at the end of the day have to be a team where they are patient. That's what I'm. That's what it was my point behind exactly when the second thing I said, the best team have to be patient right now is the Philadelphia Flowers. They're rebuilding right now. They're just starting that way, like Montreal did last year. So Mitch Cobb really associated with the Flowers, I believe, in my opinion, because he can't wait. They have no pressure for the next couple of years for that one over there. I uh, tried to pick up a couple of questions in the chat. What about Sharks' Eric Carlson? Uh, Eric Carlson, coach, how they are going to move around his contract for trade? I did not see a trade for him. Will the regular season start? You're absolutely right, possible, William, about maybe wait, but I think team want to get Carlson. The team, uh, San Jose, would like to have picks already in 2023. So the fact they're going to retain the half of the contract, you get uh, Eric Carlson, guys, for the next three years, six million dollars or less so, um ex goal with six million that would be easy one uh for the next two years yeah you're going to have to pay off over there at some point so can he get a second round pick and he get a, a prospect in return that's the only thing i said william they may be pushed this straight a little bit faster if not they have to wait after the ufa now you can get that other option what the team said wait before we get eric carlson maybe try to get on the ufa Maybe to get John Klimbert or Dumba or other players uh, on the UFE side of this uh, for the, uh, this week. So that will be that other option, William, when you talk about possibly they will hold up a little bit the trade for Eric Carlson. Uh, so great comments over there. We're going to get pick it up everything what we get here in the chat. Uh, not center, we're going to be there. KLS, welcome in the house. Uh, thanks to be with our Canadian live, uh, live show. By the way, Smith guy is going to be the Boston. Um, Boston College next next year. About that one over there. I would pick Renly on art because Kobe Doc would be the second center. The Ab Nate scorer and Owen Becker would be the third center. Mitch is going to use the card uh, Yager use Renby. Uh, about this, so a couple of people. So people, Ren Becker is to be a still at number five. Look at Lafarsen. Montreal get the choice between Leonard or Mitch Cobb, and I don't see them picking uh, Mitch uh, Cobb and Nicholas. Not sure, but I have a feeling the app are looking for. A plate driver. Uh, I would like. I really like uh, Leonard compete level. Look, uh, that's my game breaker for him. And I could try to pick it up everything else in the chat. So we're going to have give us a time to save. Bet off and Teddy Carson and Smith and the other and my mark for them. Do you guys think Montreal has the asset to go up in the draft like a third or second round pick? I'm saying that the time you answer, I will move on the clip here. So, uh, what do you feel that Montreal can move up? If yes, which team going to trade? With. They absolutely do. Um, I, I mean, I know one of the 
prospects that they're really trying to get their hands on and would have loved to get uh, uh, at at the lottery um, would be the second pick, and that would be Anaheim. Uh, they would love to get their hands on Fantilli. Um, he's a, as as uh, Randy specified earlier. He's a he's a great player. Um, has that you know that that type of attitude where he'll put the team on his back when it's needed the most and drag you into the war and uh he's a proven winner as we saw this year with the uh hobie ba baker award that he won and all the uh statistics that he's c compiled over the last couple of years uh definitely definitely an asset so i could i could see that they do have the assets because we have a number of uh, draft picks that we can draw from. We have some prospects that not all of them are going to be able to be signed by Montreal. So you can always package uh, something together and move move up. Plus, you do have two picks in the first round yourself at number five and number 31. So I'm sure if they want to, uh, they have the assets that it would take. It, it'll be whether Anaheim you know, would want to relinquish that uh, spot, um, you know, in, in favor of number five. Great comment about this, Mr. Tap. Uh, then every time we talk about players, guys, they win something. We talk about Will Mark, the winner. Now we talk about Eric Carlson. <laughs> he's a, he just won the Norris Trophy. So uh, if we mention yeah. a name, guys, maybe win something tonight. We don't know about that. The, the time you were talking, Mr. Tap. My mind is speeding all the time. Like my mind, guys, you have no clue how I, uh, I'm crazy. <laughs> but my mind speeds oh, with other option, right? <laughs> I'm going to get this guy right here in the flat here. I think one thing one Mishkov is Daniel Bria, right? And it's not yes. not sure if San Jose, Montreal are going to get Mishkov or not. He's still not sure about that. And I, I now fact you just talk about this, I. Would be surprised if the Flowers trade to the San Jose Shark for Mitch Cobb. And I would I said, why they would do that? Because San Jose guys, he said, we can get another players. If it's not Mitch Cobb, it could be a seven, like Ray Barker, or it could be Leonard. So nope. they, they're going to get a, a great pick. And then they get the 22nd pick. That will give them an extra pick for that. But so that the Flowers, why they would give us the, the 22nd pick? Because they want Mitch Cobb completely. That's what they're looking for. They want to build with Mitch Cobb for the future. So this is just pop up in my head the time in I was talking about a Montreal Canadian. So there's another option the, the Flowers could do to this. This is really what they want Mitch Cobb. They can go that way over there. They can do the same thing if San Jose got Will Smith and waiting about that. But they don't maybe said so they don't know if they're going to get Mitch Cobb or not. But if Daniel Briere said, you know what, I want Mitch Cobb, we want to build that team around Mitch Cobb, and they can wait for that, I would be surprised guy they trade with the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, it's a definite possibility. I, so I think you can add Watson in that, too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now, Washington could, could do right. that, but Washington don't have the second round pick. Yeah. So. Now, they don't have a second round, another rounder. They'd have to uh, use something like a Wilson or something. Yeah. Uh, let's move on now with Arizona. It is Mr. Nartap, but you are on the clock. Yeah. Well, with Arizona, I, I'm thinking about this right now. So I, I'm going to change my pick here because originally I had something else. But I think I think they're going to really try to beef up their, their defense. So I think at this stage, they might reach out and take David uh, Reinbacher. Uh, definitely. You know, at six foot two and 185 pounds, this guy's going to be, you know, if not the number one defenseman, definitely one of the top two or three. Uh, but this guy brings a lot to the game. And we've seen in the playoffs, you want to win um, in the playoffs, you have to have a big, rugged defense. And um, Arizona seems to be working to try to get to that stage. They've just made a trade not too long ago, and and now if they would were, were able to get Reinbach, it, it would speak volumes to you know getting them into the uh, race. 
Yeah, absolutely. Great comment about that. With the people fl uh, flew up here in the chat, guys, you can add the plus with it. Consider the talking. I'll just enjoy everybody talk. Uh, uh, first of all, Adam Berger, welcome back. And hopefully you're doing well with, uh, with, over there. You're ready to your trip in uh, Italy. Uh, that CG talk a lot about the great point. Uh, Steve about the Montreal. Nicholas talk about flowers versus the capitals. A great. Uh, uh, someone want Mitch Cobb. Christian Shaw, welcome in the house. By the way, thank you. Don't forget, guys, to click on the like. That'd be great. I think you are maybe right. Coffee make it difficult for the ad management. If I think to take him, I would be okay with Leonard and that even about that. Over there. We're going to go now. Click number seven. That is on the clock. Uh, is going to be, of course, uh, the flowers. Uh, we just talk about Daniel Beria. So, Mr. Randy, you are on the clock and you select who at number seven. Now, this pick is going to be controversial. And most Flyer fans have already described their displeasure with my pick in my blog. Uh, they wanted Leonard and everybody in the Philadelphia Flyer that I met at wants Leonard. But I like Dvorsky better. And I like him because he can play center and wing. I think he's a better skater. I think he has a terrific high IQ. And he might be one of the best passers in the draft. But most people, again, will, will swear and yell at me because they want Leonard in Philly. But I think I would go Dvorsky over him. Miss well, Delibor Devoski is selected by the Flowers at number seven. Uh, it's a pick where Devoski is between six to ten. Uh, depends who talk you talk about, uh, but it's a great selection for the Flowers. They'd be surprised like, if you think about the Flowers, uh, uh, in my opinion. But uh, uh, it, it, for me, uh, yeah, so that's what the, the Daniel Brea, like I said, they tried to get Miss Cover, in my opinion, but we'll see. And uh, coach is on the clock, and the ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and I have to go with two at the clock. The Washington Capitals are on the clock for me. And because now the draft is friendly, what I was expect, by the way. Uh, so I have to change my mind about this one over there because uh, Mr. Randy Chench at Mary Day. The Washington Capitals <laughs> are proud to select from Team USA National Development. Mr. Ren Leonard is my selection for the Capitals for this pick number eight overall pick. So I want to have uh, your reaction, Mr. Nartap, uh, about my pick and maybe the fans are all right now applause in the chat right now. They are happy about my selection. And the Capitals are great <laughs> fans, but they are very happy too. Well, uh, how, how can you argue against it? I, 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 li I like Leonard a lot, uh, you know, six foot, 190 pounds. Uh, he's very explosive. Um, you know, he's going to be a, a top-line player. Uh, his, his scoring has is, is been cited. Like, we saw the first line of the U.S. team, and, you know, we saw what he can do there. He's got great hockey knowledge and awareness and tends to make players around him much better. So this guy, if 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 the Capitals can get him at, at this point, great pickup, great pickup. Awesome. I'm proud of my team right now. So that'd be great. How about the Washington Capitals. Mr. Number nine, uh, Mr. Enartap. We go now with uh, many a terrorism. KLS is the uh, chat. A lot of people love the, the, the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, what would be your players, Mr. Enartap? Go to Chen. Is mine go with other direction? Uh? <laughs> well, now we have to change our mind, right? Um, if it's, I guess if it's Detroit at number nine, I would definitely put Zach Benson in at this stage. Um, Zach Benson is is extremely talented. Uh, if you look at his points per game, I think he ranks number two right behind Bedard. Um, he's he's going to be he's probably one of the fastest players on uh, available. Um, has great IQ, uh, explosive, uh, great agility. Uh, great stick handling ability. I mean, y you name it, this guy does it. Um, I know we've spoken about him in, in the in the last week or so, and um, even Marco's uh, really high on him. He probably has him a lot higher than nine, I'll, I'll tell you that. And I know Randy as well was speaking about him earlier. So I, if I'm Detroit, I take him at this point. I don't let him get away. Great yeah. comment about that. People ch ch uh, chatting between the players. Are you guys going to top seven? Uh, got Leonard going number five. Uh, G is in the house. Uh, G, welcome in the house. Don't forget, guys, to click on that. You go with Colby uh, Barlow about Detroit. Uh, 
Steve Eisenman, guys, is he's always been a surprise uh, GM in NHL. So I don't know what is going to be out of the box uh, about this. Uh, I think for me, he like big body. If you look about all these draft pick, uh, Eisenman. So it'll be the only thing I would say to you, Mr. Tap, I would be surprised he get Zach, uh, Zach Benson for that one there. I'm going to do a long shot with Eisenman. I think Zimachev could be a pick for him. Uh, for them, but we'll be uh, we'll see what uh, Steve is going to do for for sure. But uh, you, at that moment, it's a great pick, and anyway, to get Zen Baxson at number nine. Talk about number nine. We have to move up. We are on the clock uh, for uh, Mr. Randy. It go with the St. Louis Blues uh, uh, for this one over there, Mr. Uh, Randy. What do you say, that can? I go with the smooth playmaker Oliver Moore, the center. Um, he's everything that well, um, teams would want. He's a power play specialist. St. Louis did not have a very good power play last year. And Oliver Moore would definitely improve that. He's a um, great skater, and he's my pick for number 10, Oliver Moore. Yeah. Uh, that's that's what happened. About uh, William Snyder is uh, the coach. William Snyder, a couple of miss, a couple of nights, he was off here. So welcome back, Mr. Willie Snyder. And the Senate Blues select uh, Oliver Moore from Randy about that one over there. So you you guys, you miss me up a little bit right now here. But uh, number 12, <laughs> uh, number 12, uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, number 12, uh, uh, we have uh, Mr. Inartap, uh, number 11 Canucks uh, for me. I have number 11. This is going to change a little bit my, my, my thinking about the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, if they don't have Kuan Yu, they will select, uh, they're going to select Sandin and Pel uh, Pelika. But they have this one. So if you think about that, I think for me, they're going to get two players, and I'm still not sure how they're going to go with a size. The rest of the other players can play left wing, winger, center, or they really go with a top scorer. And if this is the case, guys, uh, with more out, uh, and I was thinking about Kobe, but, uh, Kobe but, uh, Barlow, but uh, I have to go with guys that the Vancouver Canucks are proud to select. I just love to see me from the national team development, Mr. Gabe Perro, my selection for the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, uh, Peru uh, beat uh, the record of Austin Matthews with the most point in one year with the team national. This is the selection for the Vancouver Canucks, but again, they could go with a player like uh, Barlow. Uh, I'll not be surprised. Uh, so any comments you want to hear, Randy, about my selection? I I, I have Vancouver. Yeah, the other players, what, who I would have picked for Vancouver, Barlow, but Pro I like. Perot's fast. Great player. Great offensive player. He was part of the Best line in junior hockey, wasn't he, coach? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry about he, that. I think he was the best, best long wing of the best line. So, how can you go? With, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of those picks, coach. Yeah, um, uh, right now, so, like everybody said, you know, it's it's easy to do that right now, right? And uh, because the way we do that, I think it's really the top 10 will be a little bit easier for everybody. Adam is shocked to see uh, Mr. Natap uh, Carlson, the winner of the trophy. Uh, about the the the, the Norris Trophy. Anyhow, Mr. Natap, you're on the clock at number 12, and you have to go with the Arizona Cardiz. This is the second pick of the, this. I think the first one, uh, this is your second time, Mr. Natap, you picked the same thing? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> and since I picked I picked the Reinbacher on defense, uh, it makes sense that they'll go forward here. Um that's tough now because we really flipped the order on, on this draft. <laughs> so I have to think a little <laughs> bit up, outside the box. Uh, did, did we take uh, Colby Barlow already? No. Nope. He's, he's there. No. Yeah. Y you know what? I'll, I'll take Colby Barlow uh, for, for Arizona. Okay. Um, I think that, um, you know, his, um, his, his performance at the under 18s really confirmed that, you know, he, he was a, a solid, solid player. He's a goal scorer, uh, you know, with a, uh, an elite release. Uh, it, it doesn't require much room to, you know, to rip the puck. Uh, uh, he's got a great shot accurate. He's a threat off the wall. Um, uh, and, and, you know, he can really get himself in front of the net. He's not afraid to go into the dirty areas. Um, 
And, you know, he's got decent size. He's six foot, 193 pounds. So uh, I think it fits the bill for Arizona. Great comment about Carlo. Uh, Barlow um, would be interesting. The Arizona going to that direction over there. Want to go number 13, uh, 13 guy where the Buffalo Sabres uh, are on the clock. Uh, Mr. Randy, you are on the clock with the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, it would be interesting what you're going to get there. I was going to go with the right winger, but uh, you guys left uh, Palika there for the defenseman, Axel and Sandin Palika. The Sabres have been wanting a defense this year, and if he slips the 13th, Buffalo will jump on him. Uh, so he's you a go good with offensive defense. Sandin Palika, right? That's right. Yeah, that's who I'm going with. Okay. That's good. You want to add something? I'm sorry I cut you, but. Uh, I was just going to say, I think he's probably the second best defenseman behind Rebecker in the in the draft. I love his offensive. He's a great offensive combination. He'll just add on to Buffalo's offensive defense. To me. Yep. Uh, really interesting about your comments about the number 13. Guys, want to go to number, number 14 with uh, me? I'm proud to be the Pittsburgh Penguin GM right now. So I'm uh, Kyle Dubas. Uh, let me address him. <laughs> I just and Spencer. Uh, Spencer, what do you think about that one? Uh, I don't know me right now. I'm still out of war right now, so you'll be talking later. Let's see about that. Uh, but the Pittsburgh Penguins are proud uh, to select uh, guys uh, uh, the, from Brendan Wilkins and the WHL. Nate Danielson uh, is my selection about the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, Neil and uh, Nate Danielson, or Dan Nate Daniel, whatever you want to call him. Uh, that's his um, name. And uh, that would be the one I'm looking for, the guys. Uh, Danielson uh, perfect. is my selection about this. Uh, and not that many comments about you want to talk about Danielson. Oh, Danielson's a big boy. Uh, 6'2", 190. Um, you know, he's, he, uh, again, very similar, very deceptive player. Uh, you would think at that size uh, it, there isn't much speed, but that's quite the opposite. He is a, a speedster and very deceptive with that. Um, he, uh, you know, at times in the game, it looks like he's 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 not involved, but he puts himself in the right places at the right time. So uh, that would indeed be a great pick for for Pittsburgh. Word. Yeah, a uh, couple of, uh, Dan Ashon, welcome in the house. Thanks so much. Uh, then Nicholas talk about Yager. You have sorry about this. This is a good selection for him. I see Yager drop a little bit, but uh, you, you, you're not wrong about this. Uh, G talk about uh, Ro, uh, Rosek. Uh, uh, is it Rosek, his last name? Or oh, Onzek? Uh, someone talk Onzek, about the, yeah. the kid for that. Uh, it's a jazz. It's a jazz. Uh, Samuel uh, Onzek uh, at another big. I was thinking about him too. But I will go to Danielson. I think Danielson is a more complete, uh, uh, complete player uh, uh, compared to him. But we're going to move on, guys. Uh, pick number 15. Uh, and this is a time for Enartap. And uh, Enartap moved for Arizona. It got fire. And now he's going to get a job in the Nashville Predator. About that <laughs> one over there. Uh, about this. We want to welcome Mr. Enartap. Brand uh, Stabal uh, is in the house. Welcome back. At the, well, maybe not welcome back. Maybe the first time. If you are, don't forget to subscribe, guys. And click on the like. That'd be awesome. Uh, that'd be great. The time you're going to read, uh, Mr. Enartap, I'm going to read his comments. So, Mr. Enartap, you're on the clock. You know what, Coach? When you think of Nashville, what do you think of? You think of a big, rugged, hard to play against team that rubs you at every chance they get we saw that especially a couple of years ago and i don't see why they move away from this this plan i i would give them right now at this spot the six foot 493 player out of yukon in matthew wood uh he's a, a big body power forward uh that puts a, you know he, he'll be great on the power play for them Um, you know, he's, uh, he, he's a great goal scorer as well. He's very sneaky with the puck. Uh, and, and he's got, uh, he's, he's got great IQ as well. So I, I think that that fits the bill for Nashville. Uh, great, great about this. I was thinking about this. The reason I did not take him with Pittsburgh, guys, because I feel like Mal Malkin and Crosby, uh, and, uh, and Crosby are not going to be there for a long term. So that's the reason I jumped in with Danielson. But if you want to add a uh, really big, huge uh, uh, winger, 
Uh, that's, you know, the only reason it will fall apart in the maybe 12 to 15 is because his skating is a little bit questionable about him, but otherwise he's a huge, huge uh, uh, player uh, for sure. A lot of great comments for Brian, guys. Uh, thanks so much, Brian, to participate in the chat. We appreciate a lot. Uh, then, uh, thanks so much. Uh, really kind, very nice of you to do that uh, in the chat uh, for that one. Uh, we're going to go to the move number 16, guys, because we're already at the half of the draft. Uh, we're going to move on a little bit quicker. Uh, on that one, Mr. 16, Randy, you're on the clock. And what, you know, it, it, when I prepare the show, guys, I'm, I'm always thinking <laughs> about the right thing. So it was not, I'm yeah. not lucky. I, I really think about that way. So, you know, I have to put Randy on that position category. So I will figure out that. So, sir, Randy, what the most important thing about the Calgary Flame at number 16 overall? Well, Calgary would have wanted that big winger. I'm mad at you. <laughs> you know, There's Cal another one out there, Calgary. Randy. That, that, that's that's who that's who I would have picked. Yeah, and, and that's Jaeger, and, and that's who I'm picking is Brendan Jaeger. But I, I I I like Wood a lot more than I do Jaeger. Uh, but but since you picked Jaeger uh, Wood for Nashville, I'm picking Braden Jaeger for the Calgary Flames. That's who I'm picking for the uh, the Calgary Flames. Yeah, Brandon Jaeger. All right, Jaeger. How do you pronounce his name, guys? Is it Jagger or is it Jagger? Anyone of you know? Is it Jagger? He's a smooth so, yeah. skating, smooth skating player, up and down, playmaking skills. Hard to take the puck off him. He's quick. Yes. Has a tough shot, one timer, and his one timer is lethal. I mean, he's not a bad pick for Calgary. I would pick Wood over him. Thanks a lot, No Trap. I will not speak to you for a couple of days now. <laughs> but that's who I'm picking. <laughs> Great comment about that, about the Calgary Flame. Uh, G about Spencer. Look, you're absolutely right. Uh, and then we have a kind of, then we're going to start at 7 o'clock. We'll be live at 6.30 uh, for the initial draft over that one over there. Uh, so this is the pick number 16, guys. I will go with number 17. And I'm back with the Detroit Red Wings, guys. I was thinking about this player, guys, when we get that at the number nine but i think it was a little bit earlier i did a little bit more like uh, uh, try to get a home run every year a uh, guy gets something what nobody expects and at that moment at number 17 you have a, still a lot of good player guys on the board uh, to pick up uh, for sure uh you know but uh, i'm going to shock him with you i've seen that debate between both defensemen but i will go with guys uh, the the Detroit red wing are proud to select from khl uh, the locomotive team, the defenseman Dimitri Simashev is my player for Absolutely. the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, for that, Absolutely. I was thinking about Willander, but uh, I think uh, at that 17, guys, uh, Simashev sit on the board. Uh, so you guys, you sleep on the switch right now. What's going on with you? But just kidding. No, so, no, I'm no. going to get that one over there. <laughs> no, he, coach, he was my 17th pick for Detroit. Really? And, and if you read yeah. my blog. Uh, He's the one I picked for number 17. He's uh, the perfect red winner. He makes perfect I sense. I had him at this spot as well. Here we go. Nope. So I read your mind already. Consensus. So you can see I select Flame for get, uh, for Brandy. I knew you are going to get Simeshev, and then I know uh, and I thought was proud to be GM twice for the uh, Coyotes. Uh, so that's happening yeah. about yeah. this one over there. Number 18, Mr. Natap, you're on the clock uh, this time. The Winnipeg Jets uh, are on the clock. Uh, great question, William. Uh, he said, Mr. Natap, which team is worse, uh, the Flame or the Jets? A trouble. Which one's worse? The, the, <laughs> and the yeah, trouble. Be careful. Trouble. Trouble. Oh, be careful how, how, how you answer this, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? Uh, uh, it's hard to choose between the two. I think they're both in, in huge trouble. But... Uh, <laughs> Probably Winnipeg because they don't have much to bargain with here, right? Uh, yeah, that's what uh, I'm thinking. And and anything that they've done over the past few years hasn't worked. And Shevel Dayoff has gone to the well a little bit too often uh, with, with the poor group that they have. And it's apparent that uh, given the talent that they have and and they haven't gone very far in the playoffs, that something has to be done. The t this team needs to be shaken up. So I'll probably say the Jets at this point. Awesome. Winnipeg Jet, Mr. Nata. Well, if we want to correct the problem a little bit and get get somebody that has some size, I'm going to reach here a little bit, and I'm going to take Samuel Honzek 
the center out of uh, uh, Vancouver in the WHL. Uh, six foot four, 186 pounds. Uh, every aspect of his game, it's not at excellent level, but it's at close enough. Like he's very good in all parts of his game. Is he has very sound uh, hockey IQ as well. Um, he understands how to play responsibly and defensively as well. So I, I think it, it, it fits the Winnipeg uh, mold. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you nailed it. You absolutely nailed it about this uh, in our top. Uh, still the solid player like uh, Adam Lowry, I would talk example like them. Like then you go with the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, this is the second round pick uh, they have on this uh, second time they select a uh, players on the first round after they select easily uh, Connor Bedard. Um, now they have another pick at 19. Uh, very interesting what they're going to do. Mr. Pepe, welcome in the house. Sir. I, I, I like the playmaking and ability, and he's a great skater. And Andrew Cristal is my pick for the Whoa, 19th. Oh, Mr. Cristal is out earlier. It's a good pick, though. Uh, he's, my, he, he's my pick for the Blackhawks. And, and it's kind of interesting. Uh, uh, you're giving me a big head. And not trap because coach picked my Detroit pick and you picked my Winnipeg pick. <laughs> that's exactly how I had my Winnipeg pick, too. So you guys are giving me a big head, but that's my pick. Coach, I love his playmaking ability. I love his work in the corner. He's gonna be able to, he's gonna be able to give uh, Bernard more room again. He's got a great. He's a great great player. I I love what he's doing. I think he's got an underrated shot. I think he's underrated, and I think. It'll be a great pick for the Blackhawks. Yeah, it, it, you know, it, the hockey, the hockey, uh, the, the only thing about Crystal Garris is easy. It's a copycat of Tyler to 40, 2.0. He can, his skating is strange. His stride is not there. And you feel like he, he is something missing on his skating. But otherwise, is really an offensive great scorer, is uh, electrical, uh, electric to watching him. Uh, uh, about Crystal. So it would be interesting. It's going to be a top 20 right now. It's a 19 for the Chicago Blackhawks. So great pick about uh, Crystal, guys. Uh, Isn't number he, 20, uh, guys. Uh, is it the Seattle Kraken. Best buddies uh, with Bedard? Is yes. Seattle is. next? The yes, Seattle Kraken, guys. Uh, really interesting pick for them. They can go many directions. They need maybe a scorer for sure. And maybe they need another defenseman for that. And that's the direction I'm going to do. I was not expect to pick up him for the dam. I was thinking about Quinton and Musty uh, missed, uh, for the for them. But guys, I have to go. I cannot skip on him at, at number twenty. As uh, the Seattle Kraken are proud to select from Sweden defenseman uh, Mr. Tom Willander is my selection for the the Seattle Kraken. Uh, I think it will bring what the the Seattle are listening. For that, but we know Sally Kraken have a couple of great picks like, two years ago with uh, Matthew, Matthew Bernier. But uh, this is my selection, guys. Uh, Mr. Willander, about that. Uh, let's move on now, guys, for pick number. A lot of reaction about my pick, look like. Minnesota Wall, 21st, uh, Mr. Natap. Yeah, I'm scrambling here now. <laughs> I think, um, <laughs> you know... <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think of the team and what best fits here. And I'm going to probably, you know what? You just passed on him, so I'll take him. Uh, Quinton Musty. Um, the roof on this guy is phenomenal. Um, there have been, you know, a couple people that have said that this guy it, it could be a steal at this stage in the, in the draft and could be one of the better players that comes out of uh, uh, this year's draft. Um, so I, I'll go with him because I think he, he really fits the bill, uh, for a Minnesota type of team. Um, it's not only his ability to, to score, but he's very, very, um, in tune with the game. He's got a, a, a great feel for where the puck is at all times and puts himself in the right position, uh, um, as soon as, as soon as they're in possession with the puck. So I'll go with Quinton Musty. Here we go. That's awesome. Done deal. We're going to go, guys, at number 22nd. 
uh, on that draft pick. Uh, this time, guys, uh, back again with the Flair Flair Flyers, select a uh, rear number seven. Uh, and then we have now to go with the number 20 second. I've got two picks that I've got that I can't make up my mind which one. Uh, they're both centers. But I guess I'll pick Richie. That's a good pick. Uh, Callum Richie. Yeah. Um, he's a solid offensive forward. He's an excellent playmaker. I should have probably put Stenberg above him, but I'm going to go with Richie. Anything you want to add, Mr. Natap? No, he, uh, I think um, Randy really hit it there. He's six foot two, 185 pounds. Like he's, uh, he's definitely gonna. I mean, he lacks. The only thing is, he lacks uh, consistent impact at, at five versus five. But I mean, we're talking twenty second overall here, so that's yeah, something that so he can definitely work work on. I think he can work on that, but you're right. That's that's the one yeah. downfall on him. He doesn't lack that. Yeah. Yeah. Was said both of you about this twenty third guys, the New York Rangers. Uh, what did I see the New York Rangers uh, about that one over there? Um, I can go with different ways with that part of there for the New York Rangers, uh, and I'm still thinking about two European players right now, and I'm not sure which one I should go. Uh, for that, uh, that's my biggest problem right now. Do I go with uh, a winger uh, for them and to go with a size? Uh, and I don't know it's a bit too early. Or I know with someone, he don't have a great year, but he's still a uh, great performance in the past. Uh, um, and then I'm not sure. Uh, so it's a right winger for sure uh, for that versus a left winger. So I will go, guys. Uh, and uh, this one, I could be with both of them. Uh, the New, York Rangers, uh, Ren the New York Rangers are proud to select uh, guys. Uh, and from Czechia, uh, Mr. Edouard uh, Shelley is my selection of that one over there over, over Daniel Bott. Yeah, that's an excellent pick, Coach. That's an excellent pick. So that's what I think uh, at that 23rd is a good selection about that one over there. Number 24, Mr. Nartap, uh, for this. Uh, for the second time, they select on that one, the Nashville Predator. All the team are going on the clock. And Mr. Nartap, you have an opportunity to get him, to get them something. I think Randy stole the thunder there. Uh, I, I gave them a big rugged player last time. I'm going to do the same thing here. Six foot five, 207 pounds out of Russia, Daniel Butt. Uh, raw talent. Yeah, like he's still got time to to grow into his uh, huge frame. Uh, but this guy is going to be very impactful in the NHL. And um, his, his open ice uh, hits are very impressive. Uh, his, his edge work is, is very solid, uh, given his size. Um, and he's able to swing into transition quite quickly. Uh, he's got really good hands. Uh, his, he understands what the vision is that the team tries to put forth. And I, I think that um, if he could just fill in a, a little bit more in terms of growing into his body properly, he's going to be a, a huge acquisition. And that gives Nashville two big boys. Yep, yeah, sorry about that one there. Uh, Barry, try to take a note right now uh, from you, Mr. Natap, uh, for the <laughs> upcoming tomorrow night and next two days. So there'll be that. Number 25th, uh, the Sun is Blues. Uh, for the second time again on the clock, and this time, Mr. Randy uh, is going to select who for the St. Louis Blues. Well, I had somebody else lined up for St. Louis, but if Steinberg's there, I'm picking him. I'm sorry, he's still there, and I am. Otto Steinberg will be picked by St. Louis then. Um, ah. Second line center to me, in my opinion. He gets his nose dirty, all good round player. He's probably one of the most defensive, responsible players in the draft. So, yeah, that's yeah. who I'm getting to pick. Well said about that one over there for sure. Uh, I think Stenberg could become another Ren O'Reilly. I could be wrong here. Maybe what do yeah. you think about yeah. this, uh, Randy? Uh, you feel good? You, do you yeah. feel the same way? Yeah. Exactly, Coach. I couldn't have described them better if I tried. Perfect description for him. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, so the selection 25th. Uh, we we'll go to now to go to number 26 uh, and the Sons of the Sharks. Uh. 
Who did you select? Did you give a Mishkav, Mr. Nassab? Yes, I did. Yes, you did. Yeah. Oof. Oof. I have to go with something uh, a little bit different on that one there. I, I don't know. I select almost all the defensemen so far in this draft. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's strange about that one over there. Um, we just saw Mr. Nata be going to trade who uh, during the next couple of weeks? Uh, Carlson. They're going to trade uh, Carlson, Mr. Nata. So, what kind of player can pick it up, Carlson? It could become a good, solid defenseman for them still on the board. I know where you're Is going. It, uh, Gulia, Gulia? Yes, you need yes, to that. Uh, exactly. That's what I'm no. going with that part over there. It's, for me, it's another Quinn Hughes, in my opinion. Maybe one of the best defensemen with Sandon Pelika uh, with moving the puck, everything like that. Uh, if I can recall it, is it, is it 510 for him? I think so. I think yeah. he is. He's a, right? No. Uh, he's a little bit skater, on the shorter is side. He's one of the but... best skaters in that draft for sure. And I like that he's one. Cool. I select 26 on that draft, guys. Uh, uh, for me, that's a good pick for the, the son of the Sharks. When you get uh, Mitch Cobb, uh, we're still in the region. So Mitch Cobb will go have his body with him uh, for the next 10 years. So he'll be happy about I want to please Mitch Cobb. So that's the first thing we know. So if one Mitch Cobb is going to kick the trash can in the local room after the 16 uh, last straight uh, for the team, for the Sharks, uh, now Kiliev is going to come down here and speak in Russia with him. I feel a great way about that one with him. So this is my selection for the son of the Sharks. Uh. That's a good 27, Mr. Natap, the Colorado Avenger. After that, we got we have a problem. I don't have the rest of 28 to 20 to 32 as a logo. <laughs> uh, but we have the <laughs> we're going to go by a uh, play by here on that one after that, Mr. Natap. Yeah, I'm thinking Colorado here and one of the areas that they've been looking for, even though they did just sign Johansson. Uh, I, I think th that they're going to look towards center position. And one guy that's still up there is Riley Height. Uh, he's not yep. he's not particularly big. He's only about 5'10", I want to say. and uh, uh, but, but he's still young, and he'll probably fill into that position, um, into that size. It, he's still got a bit more to grow, but, um, you know, Bedard and Jaeger, height, uh, like these guys, these guys all have uh, uh, very exceptional uh, skills. Um, he's uh, he, he tied Bedard for the WHL lead in assists with 72 uh, this year. So he's he's a sneaky scorer, and uh, um, I, I think this guy, you know, will be a great second or third line. Uh, center for Colorado, an area that they desperately need to address. I, I had him going 20th. Good pick. Good pick in no time. Is it the Next. one I'm talking about? Is it the one you just said? I did not know his name. Is it this one? Yeah, yeah. Right. That's okay. you're talking about. You got All right, sound good. Yeah. I, I want to be sure about that one over there. So we're going to go with number 28 pick. Right now I'm just changing, guys. A pick, like I said to you guys, I don't have any logo after that. I was limited. I think it's a Toronto Maple Leaf. I can recall it, right? Yeah, that's your next coach. Uh, yeah. No, it's, yeah, Toronto. It's Toronto. Toronto, yeah. Toronto 28. About that one yeah, over Toronto. there. So the Toronto Maple Leaf, Mr. Rendy. Defenseman Lucas Drage. Drage. Can you help me pronounce his last name? Uh, Lucas Drevic, yes, Dojivic. Um, he's Dragivic. big. I know, I know it's off the wall, and I know it's good. I know my Maple Leaf, my Maple Leaf fans have not liked the pick, but it's off the wall. I like him. Uh, we need help with defense, and he's a couple years away, but Toronto's in no hurry. That's who I'm picking for the 28th. Lucas Dragic. That's Lucas, it's got great right? Size. All right, yeah, Sangha. Yeah. We're just gonna move up with that Dragic name of there. Dragicevic. Good skill Yeah. yeah. Um, D R A G I C E V I C. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely right about that one over there. 
Number 29, guys, uh, for this one uh, is going to be the St. Louis Blues. Again, uh, the Blues are back in the and the lot over there. So I'm going to get there, guys. Uh, I will say, you know what? I have that picture, so why not to go that one over there? So 29. Uh, hey, I'm on the clock, right? Yes, yes. you are. <laughs> and this one, guys, is really strange for me. Um, I was not sure to go that way. I, I I want to get another defenseman, but I feel like it's boring right now. Why not to make some things different? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you have some other player you can select at that one there. I'm thinking right now to get maybe another defenseman. But I'll have to go, guys, uh, on the only one play in the BCHL this year. And I'm talking about uh, Bradley and Nadeau is my selection about that one over there. Bradley Nadeau for the St. Louis Blues. Uh, uh, for this uh, pick number 29, uh, that's what we got so far. Okay. So, what do you think about that pick, everybody? Excellent pick. I like yeah. him. I like his I, I, I had him originally at the start of the second round, but it's definitely a good pick. Sound I good to about 30. Sound good to me. And uh, Mr. Nata, we'll go to more 130. I'm sorry, guys. We'll try to pick it up as soon as we can. Number 30, Mr. Nata. And this time at 30, you have the Carolina Hurricane, Mr. Nata. Just before the Montreal Canadian, uh, Randy is going to be lucky to select Montreal twice, Mr. Nata. <laughs> uh, but interesting. You better not pick my pick. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nata? Well, yeah. I. You know what? Um, I... I'm gonna go with the uh, six foot two, 180 pound defenseman uh, for them in Oliver Bonk. Um, I'm, I'm surprised he's still available this late in the in the first round. Uh, I, I think it, it again, it fits the team. Uh, he's he's he, he's very much a, a defensive oriented, but he, he's also uh, he's not scoring. Uh, deficient like he i think this year he picked up around 40 points in 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 65 games so that bodes well for him uh in certain circumstances excellent five on five covers uh his zone very very well clears people in front of the net and that's exactly you know carolina style so i'll take oliver bonk well said about that one over there. I cannot be more. Uh, I agree with you about uh, bound fit with, 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 with a style of Carolina Hurricane, in my opinion, uh, for that one there. Uh, we're going to go to 31, and Mr. Randy is the lucky one tonight. He got the, 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 the Montreal Canadian twice uh, about that, so maybe it would be some, you're going to upset some fans here tonight, <laughs> or you'll be happy about your selection. <laughs> be good. Well, then, be good. I am, uh, and this pick I think is a great pick. Montreal needs a player to add to the grit. They get his nose dirty. They need some. They need some grit added on to this team. I often find the Canadians too soft, and that's why I went with Ethan Gauthier, right wing. Oh, Ethan Gauthier, with. guys, yeah. get the selection of Montreal Canadian. Really, I'm not surprised, but uh, that's the name was mentioned on that one over there. So that's great to hear the Montreal Canadian get Ethan Gauthier. So, Mister Tap, your first reaction. I had I had Gauthier with Montreal as well. Makes a, a great home story as well. He's out of Sherbrooke, out of the queue. Um, his skating is excellent. Um, he, he, you know, uh, he, he's not his physicality is not as great as I would like to see it. Uh, but again, those are things that are very coachable, and he's not yeah. afraid. Uh, he's he's not afraid to get involved. So. That's just something I, I think it, it's more a reflection of him trying not to make mistakes that he doesn't obviously get involved as much. And uh, I think that that's very correctable. Well said, uh, Mr. Uh, Randy, uh, first who you pick and then in our top, you said it's right thing about that one for sure. And uh, that will uh, give us guys the last pick of the night. Uh, uh, but we have another pick after that. I'm going to be surprised everybody with the next pick. <laughs> but um, listen, that's my last pick of the first round. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knight uh, is the pick uh, for them. I'm going to select for them. Uh, so um, I look about the board. We have a couple of great players still on the board, guys, that we can select mm -hmm. as the forward, everything like that. And, uh, the, you know, they, 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 the Vegas Golden Knight are looking for something like that, and I think that will fit very well on that. A bit earlier, maybe some of you will be surprised, but uh, the Vegas Golden Knight are proud to select 
The goaltender from Omar Lancer in the USHL, oh. Michael <laughs> Rabal, is my pick for the Vegas Golden Knight as the first goaltender out of this NHL draft 2023, the John 6 6. So, this is my selection. So, Mr. Nartap and Randy, any comments about that? Yeah, it's a great pick. Uh, how can you argue with that? When you look at this year's uh, availability of goalies, I would say there's about three, possibly four, that could be starters in the NHL. So at some point, once uh, the first team, in this case, uh, you know, we went with Vegas, um, uh, he comes off the board, you might see a bit of a domino effect with some other teams right after that, with guys like uh, August and a couple of other goalies that are available. Um, Morrison is personally, down there too. I, I, I don't... I don't know if I would have gone with him for Vegas uh, because of their current situation with the goalies. Uh, like they do have quite a bit and, and they're all young, like in Thompson, uh, Aiden Hill that they, they're going to sign and, and possibly Brasson. Although, you know, from what I'm hearing, he might be, he might be let go. Done. Um, yeah. So, but I was we'll just said to you, Mister Natap, if you think about a goaltender like yeah. him, you think about five, six years. That's true. That's yeah. true. So that's, that's the only true. reason I go with Vegas about him about this. You think about the. Um, uh, for me, I don't believe in Thompson. In my opinion, um, uh, he struggled a lot. He struggled a lot uh, after the good start, and I think uh, he'll he have to prove it to me. So. It's a shaky. They don't have like any real prospect in the goaltender, by the way, where they, I believe Rabble could be that kind of fixed problem for them in the first year. That's the only reason I go with that way. But uh, I can understand your point of view about that one over there. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Wendy, um, uh, that's maybe your, tri- your dream uh, to go that direction right now uh, because you wanted to have a hat trick on Montreal Canadiens at the 37. <laughs> Uh, tonight, uh, but we're going to give that pick and Mr. Nartap. Mr. Nartap, uh, if you are right now at the second round, uh, let's see what the player you have already in the board. Uh, they are uh, still on the board, Mr. Nartap, uh, at 37. And then, Randy, select your pick for the Montreal Canadian uh, for that one. What it would be your selection, Mr. Nartap, at 37 for the Montreal? At 37, I, I always say you, you can never have enough centermen. And one guy that's still out there is Charlie Stremel. At six foot three, two hundred and seventeen pounds, um, like I, I, I think that his his work ethic is uh, is fantastic. Um, he's very physical. He likes to play, the, you know, that type of game. He's he's as one scout put him. He's a, he's a beast. So could you imagine, you know, obviously having him with somebody like Jack Eye and 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 Gooley, Like you're gonna have. A solid, solid uh, defensive core for many years to come. So uh, I, I like that. Uh, I think at center he fit, fits the bill, um, and and makes him strong up the middle because uh, you'll have like Strammel. You'll have, uh, um, I mean, Suzuki would be your smallest player at six foot, right? Because you have Doc there uh, that that'll fit the bill. You never know if. I mean, Pierre-Luc Dubois might still be in the conversation. <laughs> Who knows? And then defensively, like I said, you'll have guys like Gooley and and Jack Eye, uh, big boys uh, that will hold their own. And what does Coach always say? You got to go big. Yeah, sorry yeah. about this. Randy, have any players you would like to maybe Montreal select at 37? is still on the board. He took mine, so I'm going to go uh, Gavin Brindley, right winger. Um, uh, Gavin can be summed up as a Tasmanian devil. He's a tenacious in attitude and detail. He has high hockey IQ, bails out his teammates when they make mistakes. He will make the ideal third line center or great penalty leader. I mean, third line right winger, actually. Um, great player. Um, leader in the dressing room. That's who I went with. Gavin Brindley. I had him 29th in St. Louis. So I'll take him at 30. If he's there, that's who I would pick for the Canadians, the 37th. 
A great, great pick about this 32 at 37 percent win of them. Uh, save G for the Montreal Canadian. Yeah, but uh, you get for what and return save will be the my biggest question for that one for sure. Uh, I think that 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 friend lab usually save the the draft is not deep like he is this year. So I think it's not much advantage this year to trade uh, the pick 31st, 37. At least they have something specific they're looking for. Uh, but it would be interesting if what Montreal can go that way over there, for sure. Uh, I don't know the name, the, his last name, but is it M Mongard or Mogard? Or a double O at the end. Uh, you have a three name. Uh, you have a three name. Uh, um, but I've been uh, the defenseman I'm thinking about, guys, is Mal Mal Malignac. Uh, yes, I know who you mean. Mogard? Are you talking about one Mogard? of them is Mozart, but another one is a defenseman. It's a uh, but he's a left defenseman. That's the only problem for the Montreal. Uh, I think it's Malin Malignac for the WHL, but I could be wrong. I don't have the name in front of me. I'm just thinking on my on my head right now. So, uh, about that one over there. So that's what we got, guys, uh, for the NHL draft. We did the first uh, draft of this one. Today we're going to be uh, moving up uh, uh, tomorrow night with a special show, guys, about the Montreal Canadiens. What is going to be the pick number fifth? And then uh, what your expectation about the draft? Uh, uh, what do you think what could happen for different teams like the Flowers and Nashville or, or any other team? Move up, move down. Uh, and then maybe I'm going to have a couple of trades until we see the show tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Uh, I would like to sit, uh, take a time to uh, finish the show with the uh, French Equals. We have Randy with me, with us tonight. So why not to make a French Equals for everybody uh, for that? Uh, here we go, Nicholas. It's Oscar Fiscar uh, Mol Maldegard. Uh, there's a lot of horror okay, at yeah. the end of the day. It's the mom and the dad is because you know what? We're not to forget with the Oscar Fiscar and Mulgard uh, about that one over there. Uh, so it'll be interesting about that uh, if it's happening. Uh, you are come look about this. We're going to move on to the French request. If you don't mind, Randy, do you have a little bit more minute to sit with us, Mr. Randy? Yeah, my wife just left. She's gone to pick up my kid. So yeah, I go. can do it. So that's great to hear that about that. Uh, we did not move nowhere, guys. Uh, in after when the, the last one, it was the t June 23rd, the last time we did a show about the quiz. Uh, and then he reached on the leaderboard, Nicola de Gobi Bono. Well, Nicola, we missed the last two days. Hopefully, Nicola is doing well. Uh, Nicola is going to be a great. Uh, uh, Nicola said, Amol Denet, uh, really like him. Of course, he's a left different. Yeah, absolutely right about this, Nicholas. Uh, quiz, yes, I need a <laughs> look about that one over there. Uh, thanks so much, William. Very kind of you guys. Uh, uh, the, 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 the people in the chat said, where are they? So just uh, waiting right now. I just don't give them right away to see the question about that one there. So that's what we got, guys. We're going to start the show, the Frenchy quiz. And uh, don't forget, guys, tomorrow night we are at 9 o'clock p.m. And uh, then Wednesday at 6 at 30 p.m. And then Thursday we are back at 11 o'clock a.m. The other three days. And then Friday at 9 o'clock is Saturday. Uh, we're going to be live at 11 o'clock a.m. for the UFA. Uh, that's what we got this week. And then the coach take a one-night break after that uh, to recovery. All the <laughs> night I met a lot of cheese during the week, so I have to cal calculate everything about that one over there. Uh, the cheese was good last cool. night. <laughs> but Rudolph loved good the thing cheese in Thailand. I can tell you that. I've tapped with Randy. Uh, Rudolph loved the cheese in Thailand. Uh, about that one over there. I was really smart. I was the bodyguard for Rudolph last night, so I did not want to do anything. I told the woman, said, look, I cannot have to watch him. What's going on? At some point, he said, I thought, uh, Rudolph was on the floor. I said, what the heck is he looking for, uh -oh. maybe? You know I me? Mean? He was on the, on the table. And I did not know what it was the, that move from Rudolph, but he looked at a strong kind of move. Uh, uh, you know, he was a bit the John Travolta of the show last night uh, at the cheese bar. Honey, how guys, it's time for the French quiz. I don't want to go more deeper. Oh, my God! Deeper about what's supposed to happen. And let's go with question number one. Here we go. Not very difficult tonight. Uh, Send 2000, which defenseman have the most multi-goal game Ladies and gentlemen, is it Roman, uh, Roman Ozzy, Shea Weber, Roman Ozzy again, Eric Carlson, and Chris Letang about that one over there. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the one, they have a double, uh, a double, uh, 
uh, Roman Ozzy guys I exchanged with uh, Victor Ekman I apologize for that one over there so I'll put a Victor Ekman about that one over there so I apologize for that one there so that's what you got right now if you want to take a little bit more time uh, Edmund Weber OZ Carlson Le Tank yes Adam you can look go with Le Tank uh, Chicago Nick go with C welcome back Nick uh, by the way uh, RG go with uh, Carlson uh, for that one over there uh, G go with uh, Edmund and then Mark Elliott welcome back Mark uh, very quiet tonight hopefully doing well Eric Carlson on that one over there, a few people. Uh, we have Willie Snyder with D. Uh, uh, you go with Eric Carlson. We we'll wait for other people. Point uh, on that. During that time, Mr. Natal, you can give us your first answer tonight. This is in uh, regular season or playoff, Coach? Regular season. Regular season. Okay. With uh, the I'll most with... multi goals, you have at least two goals per game. Yeah. Um... Let's go with the Norris winner from tonight, Eric Carlson. Awesome. We have Gary Conway, G, a KLS, a Steve, a King of Gamer, and Mr. Wendy. Uh, here we go. I think I'll go with Joshi C. Roman, Roman Joshi. OC for C about this one over there. Uh, very surprised. A lot of people go with Eric Carlson. He was the earnest coach. He's always called tricky like that, right? Uh, and we have only oh my God. one good answer, guys. You'll be shocked. If I said to you, maybe not. Gary Conway is the winner with Mr. Shea Weber. Shea Weber. I have the most multi-goal game and sent 2,000. So Shea Weber, Gary Conway is the only one, guys, got that one for congratulations for Mr. Gary Conway, go, Gary. the winner. Here we go. Uh, Luke said, boo, <laughs> after that one over there. Uh, they are Templar that scored 30 goals in one season before 21 years old, uh, 21 years old uh, or younger. Which one did it the most? Uh, for all for the Buffalo Sabre, by the way. Is it Danny Gare, Pierre Durgeon, Rick Mar uh, Richard Martin, Dave Andrechuk, and Gilbert Perrault? This is for the Buffalo Sabre. did not put the Buffalo Sabre, I don't know why. But who has the most... Uh, um uh, then the have Templar did it for the Buffalo Sabres guys. They had 30 goals in one season before the 21 years old, a younger. Which one did it the most? Uh, Gare, Surgeon, Martin, and Trechuk, or Perro? About that one. Uh, we have Mr. Chicago go with uh, Richard Martin. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, for that one over there. Uh, we'll wait for other people uh, if they have any comments or any answer about this. Uh, it looks like I don't get anything. So, uh, RJ go with C and uh, two and two for Martin right now. So, thanks so much, Captain Kirk, uh, for Gary uh, for that one. Uh, whoa, there you go. Uh, look at the go uh, Martin, uh, Gary go with Surgeon. Uh, about that one. Willie Snyder with D and Mac Elliott with C. KLS with D. Davy is in the house. Welcome back, Davy. Gabe Perro. C. G. Go with uh, Danny Gare. I love Danny Gare. Uh, G. Go with C. Uh, about this one over there. And Mr. Uh, uh, Randy, maybe you can help in the center tap. Oh. <laughs> if Anna Tap needs help for me, then he's in real trouble, coach. <laughs> um, I think it's D, Dave Andrechuk. Dave Andrechuk, uh, here we go. And Mr. Um, enough tap. I'm going to go with uh, Pierre Turgeon, B. Pierre Turgeon with Mr. Enough tap. Go with Pierre Turgeon on that one. Uh, look at the first thing, Martin, for sure. Uh, look again. Go eat uh, your cereal. <laughs> Your Kellogg's, <laughs> uh, and then the, <laughs> the answer that one, guys, uh, it's uh, B. Pierre Turgeon, get it, ladies and gentlemen. We have three winners on that question. We have, first of all, Gary Cornoy, oh, guys, a two and two tonight, uh, following oh, by a uh, king of game, get Gary. one goal, and in our top, just scored that one over there. So, congratulations for uh, Mr. Gary Cornoy. We're not done yet. We have one more question to go, guys. Uh, question number three. Yeah, I'm embarrassed. I better get one of them. <laughs> Gary's on a roll tonight. He 
Easy one, guys. I want to finish this with easy uh, for tonight. Uh, and we have the Ketchuk family, guys, uh, through age uh, 23 years old, uh, who has the most shot on the net. Uh, I apologize. I want to change the, the words here. Who has the most shot on the net, guys, uh, uh, until they get 23 years old? Uh, is it uh, the dad, Keith? Uh, is it uh, Matthew or Brady uh, for the family uh, until they got 23 years old in NHL? Uh, this is what we got tonight. Uh, Captain Kirk says 0-2. I'm consistent. <laughs> is it the hard one, uh, William McClary? <laughs> Uh, G strike three. Uh, Chicago go with C. Thanks so much, Chicago. Look with C. Rand Kirk with C. A lot of people go with Brandy so far. Uh, about that one. Then we have KLS with A. Steve G with A. Uh, D with B. About that one over there. We'll be interested to see. Uh, King of Gamer go with C. William B. McLean with B. Gary Gunner with A. About that one over there. So King, if he's right and Gary is wrong, King tied the game. G go with A with Keith, and uh, that's what we got. Uh, Mister uh, Mister uh, Randy, you zero two, and another tap is a uh, two uh, one is zero. So we we'll go with another tap. Maybe you can help him Randy on that one. Mister another tap. This that's is a crucial right. answer. If you want to tie the game, you have to go around A because uh, Gary go with A. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, man, the, that's my first. Uh... My first answer was uh, Keith as well. Um, you know what? Uh, I'll, I'll go. I'll go with Matthew just to be different and open a possible route to victory. All right. So that good news about this, uh, Mister Natap, uh, King of Gamer, go C. Hey. So if he's win, if go. he's C, he tie Gary. If he's wrong, and if you are right, uh, you tie the game with Gary. And uh, Gary is right. So you guys, I don't matter. I'm going to win anyway. So we'll see what's happening with the, that. And so, guys, so we have an ABC. The winner of this, uh, maybe, is Gary. Wait, 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 it's yeah. still a shut up. I'm still going to get it wrong, but I think it's A. Yeah, and I so think it's Keith, A. Uh, Keith gets shook for Mr. Randy. And I will say to you, maybe you do not, uh, you should not answer that question because the answer guy <laughs> is C. It's Brady. About oh that God. one over there. But Gary lost uh, the last answer. <laughs> King of Gamer came back with two good answers and tied the game with Carrie Goldenwayi and Mr. Natap uh, with that possibility to tie the game did not work for you. And congratulations, guys, for Mr. Gary Goldenwayi <laughs> and King of Gamer uh, tonight uh, on that one over there. I think, guys, uh, we have about uh, maybe 10 people, maybe a little bit more participate. And you know, it surprised me. Only five good answers tonight. Only five. Uh, Gary, two of them, King two, and Mr. Natap. The rest are zero three. Uh, so the some said in the chat right now, we are really consistency. Uh, we always be zero three, zero uh, all the time. But uh, that's happening about this one over there, guys. Who are worse here? We first of all, we want to thank guys, uh, Randy Walkman, back in the house. Uh, Glad having you, Mr. Randy. Great, great uh, knowledge about hockey guys. Follow him on the uh, the Flames uh, category. He writes a lot about them most of the time. And then uh, Mr. Natab again did it again uh, to join a special edition of the NHL Mock Draft 2023. We'll be back uh, again tomorrow night uh, for the Montreal Canadian. And then we want to thank everybody, all the moderators, Mr. Luciano, roll the uh, run the show by himself tonight as a moderator, the unique moderator in the chat tonight. Uh, but we have a lot of great people in the chat. Before you leave the building, guys, don't forget to click on the like. Tomorrow night, the Montreal Canadian Ad Nation is back with a special edition all about the Montreal Canadian tomorrow night uh, and a couple of news around the league. And then we'll be back live at 6.30. Some people are going to join me live uh, about the, that night. Of course, uh, we're going to join at some point. Uh, Randy, maybe join us at some point during the show uh, that evening. Until then, my friend, we want to thank everybody. We wish you an amazing, great night. But before we start, we always said something else. Um, oh, we, we, maybe the time we start this, Mr. Natap, maybe you can tell us maybe one thing you're looking for for the NHL draft at Wednesday night. Uh, you can share it with us uh, with Randy following. A trade to be made within the first three rounds. Here we go. And Randy. 
Montreal will shock the people with their 31st pick. They'll go off the board. Wow, this is a great to see that. Uh, but if were, before we leave, guys, we want to remind everybody. You are awesome. Both of you. You are amazing. Oh, yes. You are the best. And remember, you have greatness instead of you. You have greatness instead of you, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, in another great uh, ad barbecue show tonight. Until the next time, uh, of course, we want to remind you, of course, uh, have an amazing, great night, sweet dream. And be ready. The uh, week is just the beginning of the week, guys, in Nashville. Everybody, they have their cowboy hat and their boots out, and they I enjoy. Uh, they're looking for some cheese over there. But until then, my friend, uh, we want to remind you one more thing. Be well, be healthy. Find a way not only dominate your day, but find a way to dominate the first app. Uh, what was that? You're 20, 23. He did it again. An amazing great night. Remember. The Hockey Nation, I should say one more thing to each one of you. We love you, friends. Uh, have an amazing, great night. Thanks you, Randy and Mr. Enatap, uh, for your participation tonight. Good night, Randy. Good night, Coach. Good night, Hockey Nation. Good night. Oh, 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 oh. Booyah!